when you choose legal profession your life is full of challenges what is the legal advice that you frequently give to any entrepreneur who comes to you i see a lot of clients who come to me engaged in business activities which has got nothing to do with the business activity mentioned in the trade license please government if you're listening even if it's the basic insurance we should not be asked to pay for it because i think this is the basic necessity you're spending money we're creating a will you must include all the assets and properties which you have we can't say that i'm from this particular generation we don't want it it's the need of the hour and we live in ua just focusing entirely on ai what's the best part of living in dubai at every step there's an opportunity waiting for you once you know yourself then you know where you want to go just take the first step don't think too much Welcome to Women of Wonder by Reema Mahajan or Wow Women as we lovingly call it. This is our initiative to bring to you stories of empowered and ambitious women so that we can all take inspiration from them. I'm your host Reema and today we are joined by Ms Chandni Malhotra, Director and CEO of Malhotra Legal Consultancy. Chandni's journey from a Delhi advocate to a law professor and now a pioneering entrepreneur in dubai is a narrative of resilience and innovation with a rich educational background and a passion for law and justice chandni has established herself as a formidable force in the legal field in dubai she's made her mark by founding a legal consulting firm dedicated to accessible legal support join us as we explore chandni's inspiring path her impactful work in the UAE and her vision for empowering others. Welcome to the podcast, Chandini. It's lovely to have you here today. Much obliged. I'm extremely overwhelmed that I'm short of adequate words to fully <laughs> thank you for having me here. And I think much credit also goes to TNB Podcasting Team for directing this show. We are partnering with TNB Podcasting Team from the very beginning. So the team helped me launch this podcast. And I think where we are with Women of Wonder comes from Neet and his whole team. Let's talk about law in the UAE. I want to focus on some of the misconceptions around law that we have here, especially related to women. My first question is, let's do some myth busting. What are the top three legal misconceptions that you come across when you meet women entrepreneurs in the UAE? I would like to answer this question uh, by taking the gender out of this because what I've realized in past three years after meeting more than 100 clients that uh, the complications are more or less same whether it's a man or a woman. The first factor I would like to focus on is I know it all attitude. Most of my clients they would come to me and uh, they would pretend as if they know it all. They already know that this is the trade license requirement, this is the visa requirement, they've made the payment. then what are you coming to me for it's like you know you're going to the doctor you already know that you need a particular surgery let the doctor do the work so this attitude that you know it all does not really always help you as an entrepreneur because later on you might get into troubles for which you have to go to the lawyer and waste a lot of money so the first step is shed that attitude consult a lawyer and then start your journey the second thing i would say is the money part a lot of people they don't take the first step thinking that it's going to be very expensive to become a business woman in dubai yes. i'm sure you must have also yes, faced that yes i hear the same a lot a yeah. lot yes yeah. uh, i understand see we are sitting in dubai which is one of the most expensive cities to be in but the money part can always be little played with for example uh, what i have realized in my journey if you spend say 2 hours every day in front of the laptop say for 7 days or 8 days trust me you can save 50% of your costs why because you would understand what your goals are what you want to achieve and then no pro or a business consultancy can fool you you do not really have to go through a lot of compliance processes because your business might not want that so the misconception of the people it has to be really done away with what is the legal advice that you frequently give to any entrepreneur who comes to you so i'll be very blunt here i tell them at least uh, spare 5 to 10000 dirhams in the beginning for a lawyer or just be ready to go out there you should have enough courage mm -hmm. why because uh, again i'll give you an example here i see a lot of clients who come to me engaged into business activities which has got nothing to do with the business activity mentioned in the trade license so this year uh, dubai government uh, claimed that uh, influencers market is going to see a boom mm -hmm. and uh, most probably by the end of the year 5% contribution to dubai economy will come from content creators okay. okay right after that i saw on instagram n number of reels from different agencies stating that you can apply for an influencers license for 1500 dirhams i did reach out to them 
the kind of license what they're selling you has got nothing to do with your paid collaborations it only talks about blogging as an activity okay. so that's the wrong license then i saw another advertisement again talking about the influencers license they're selling it for 5500 Now I reached out to National Media Council which is solely responsible for this particular industry. They said we are yet to come with the specific guidelines. But that's because you know information is not easily available or people do not do enough research. Which which of these I would go I would uh, agree with the latter part. Okay. See information is always there. This world is full of information. You just go to Google. You always have an option to uh, you know spend time on the reel which you find very attractive, you know, or you find a hot girl dancing yeah. around or something which has a lot of good edits. On the other hand, you can find something which is very simple, but you should always check the description part. Always check where is the source of information coming from. If you can do that as an aware citizen or an expat, I think that would work for you. So let's talk about setting up a business. You know, I'm a new entrepreneur. I want to start a skincare company, right? I make some handmade products at home. How do I start that? What type of licenses do I need to look at? What type of compliances do I need to keep in mind? Whether it be a healthcare business or any makeup business, any industry whatsoever, there are certain steps that you must follow. The first step is you have to be very precise and clear as to what exactly you want to do. For example, if it's a skincare industry, you have to see whether you want to get into the manufacture line. you want to be a retailer you want to be a wholesaler that is one second you have to see whether you want um, a storage space to preserve those items whether you want a warehouse or you want to do it from home so different questions need to be answered and then once you know that what's going to be your trade activity that is where the second step comes in which all approvals do i want law is all logic so you have to apply the basic logic for example there's something which you apply on your skin health industry comes into picture so you have to have an approval from the dubai healthcare authorities again if you want some storage facility then you may want to reach out to say russell core industrial area other area so again for any industry first you have to answer the question what exactly do you want and that is where what all approvals are there then you have to figure that out and what if it's a simpler industry and it's not a product industry it's a service that i want to launch i want to launch a marketing company okay. uh, it's a service i'm going to offer what approvals and licenses do i need to make that happen okay again we'll come back to the first question what exactly want to do in marketing because i've seen a lot of people uh, you know you would market you might also want to do some paid collaboration you also might want to handle their social media accounts so again jot down all the activities right. now free zones in dubai or ua in general they give you option of combining all the related activities under one license okay so that is what you do Second question you should ask yourself whether you want to have a, an office or not. If you want to have a physical space where you meet your clients, then you should go for the mainland license, right. not for the free zone. Okay. But otherwise if you don't if you want to save on your cost, then of course free zone is better. Right. Now here since you do not have any third party implications or there is no security as such required, so no external compliance is required at the moment. Again, you know in future Dubai government comes up with one thing or the other. That is why again I would come back to the same point you should always consult a lawyer because the law is ever changing game. Even we as lawyers we do not know everything. Today I may give you a different advice but tomorrow there's a new law. Right. Right. So that is why this is the importance. Is hiring so, a lawyer expensive? It is in Dubai. It is very expensive. Yeah. This is again one of the reasons why I came up with this legal consultancy because I used to meet a lot of friends. Everybody is an entrepreneur. They used to discuss their problems, and everybody thought that you know I am a go-to free legal advisor to everyone. I don't mind doing that for my friends, for other people, but I knew that there was a problem. Mm -hmm. Nobody would go to the lawyer here. One because most of them they are from Arabic culture, language problem. Second. they do not want to sit with you explain you the problem they would only tell you that this is what they're going to do we as indians as expats because you're paying a lot of money you know we, we want somebody to tell us what the problem is we want someone to just take care of us and let us know step by step everything i knew this was a problem in the market hence i came up with this company so that i can offer affordable legal assistance to the client and if even if need be i don't mind doing it free of cost as well where i'm coming from is uh, so i'm a new women entrepreneur and starting my business from scratch your first to worry is getting the right trade license second setting up your products and services then the law is like okay do i need to really hire a lawyer and an accountant what's your advice to those i look at it very differently i am not uh, talking like a lawyer here i'm talking like uh, a smart and an aware person understand that it is your investment you're not paying this money to the lawyer it's an investment that you're doing to set up your business usually in the ua you'll see you know different people coming together and forming a company so basically it's a partnership mode what if tomorrow one of your partners which happens here every next day trust me 
wants to start a similar company then all the clients are also taken away because you all share the data what will happen now what is the exit clause from that company who takes the final decisions if you are not prepared for all these things in the beginning you will always end up in some legal trouble and then you pay 20000 40000 50000 to the lawyer then you cannot say no but then that is all you know money going out of pain but if you do that in the beginning it's your investment great it's been lovely busting some myths chandni so let's move on to the next section and this is more getting to know how did you land in dubai what happened i you did your law in india and then you came to dubai one fine day during covid before covid and during covid and then you stayed back what happened tell us more it's like i believe in the universe's calling i think it was my calling and i think more than uh, myself dubai needed me because <laughs> yeah yeah and we i do we do need yeah. good we do need good lawyers and good talent here absolutely my and i take pride in the fact that because uh, i have uh, really i won't use the word help because that's like you know bragging about yourself but then yeah i think i've been of great help to a lot of people who needed support when i came in here and also when i came it was covid so my visa just got got extended i had to stay here so yeah it just happened and in the process you have bought a new home you've set up your new company it looks like a very fine happy ride but i'm sure there must be some challenges to it absolutely absolutely what are the challenges what did you go through when i came here uh, so first how did i get the first job where i was uh, working for past 3 years so when i came to dubai i knew that i i was stuck here for 3 months i wanted to do all the childhood list that i prepared for myself you okay. know okay So the first thing was that I wanted to be a waitress. Okay. And I was on tourist visa. Nobody would hire me like that. But I was lucky enough. I did get a job for a week. Second thing, uh, it was in my list. I wanted to be a nanny. I know nothing about kids. I've never <laughs> been with kids in my life. Oh my god. So yeah, of course I was doing nothing. So I wanted to make some money, explore how the people live here, etc. Right. So one fine day on a Facebook group, I saw somebody posting that looking for a nanny for my sister's children who are stuck here due to COVID and they're from the UK. looking for experienced nanny first i don't know what does a nanny do second experience forget <laughs> about it i applied for it okay i went there first day i met those people and then i had to tell them my truth and i got to know that that man had a law firm he okay. offered me a job wow and from second day onwards i started going to the office wow so that's what you know dubai just happened to me there was one of course in the beginning you know when you get a lot of importance in the office people don't like it then uh, sharing your space with somebody because in uh, delhi i was an accomplished lawyer making good money mm. i did not want to waste a lot of money on my accommodation because i always give myself goals uh, i sp- shared my space with two other girls for two months right. then i got my own room and then i got my own apartment so yeah it's pretty much been a journey how did you move from being a lawyer to established social media influencer how did instagram happen again i would say universe has been very kind because i am kind to the universe so i always get to know what's my next calling so when i was a practicing lawyer back in india and i i always used to have a group of interns with me mm mm-hmm. And then i would realize when i sent them to the court they don't really know what the procedure is why because they did not study well or they were not taught well in the law colleges so i knew that uh, i had to shift my focus from uh, being a lawyer to a law professor so i shifted because i knew there was a problem i had to fix it similarly when i came to dubai i was happily working as a lawyer in the firm but every next client i would talk to or every next acquaintance i bump into i realized that they all have so many issues and they're not approaching the lawyer or stuck with lawyers because again highly paid etc etc so i knew there was a problem and i wanted to fix it so i knew that this was my next step and so the company came again instagram again i'm not an influencer so don't call me <laughs> you I, are in your own right you tell us about you teach us all about law and things i try happening. to i mean i try to because what i realized uh, people make a lot of reels here the n number of influencers in dubai mashallah doing good also yeah. but uh not everybody wants to know about good restaurants and places to go to because the real life is not fancy everybody wants to make money and everybody wants to stay away from troubles i wanted to give knowledge to the people about how things actually work here in case you get stuck you should know what the basics of law is it's like every next company there's an employee who's unhappy who does not get annual leave who does not get salary on time so in all these things you know unless you know about your rights you can't take the next step and some people say that the ua law is biased see the courts will never come to you and knock the door you have to go but in order to go first you should know what your right is so that was my motivation and i'm just going on and i'm getting good response so moving on to one topic which is very common amongst indians is inheritance planning right uh, because we are all expats we leave our country behind we have different laws in india we have different laws in uae what are the biggest issues you've seen from your experience so far and also after that 
what advice would you give on inheritance planning to everyone including women around this it's as basic as uh, you should know what are the ingredients uh, somebody is using to prepare your meal if i'm just consuming carbs and carbs i don't expect my skin to glow because carbs won't give me that glow yes. right i my body has to have all the nutrition again i'm working day and night in the ua you know i'm just ignoring my family of course you ignore your health you do everything and you invest all your money say in stocks or in a property but you don't know if you die where does the property go is your mother able to enjoy that property will your children be able to have access to those money those funds or not in that case the first recommendation that i give to any client or anybody in general all the audience is you should prepare a will what is a will will is basically a simple document which says that after you are no more on this planet so and so person should take your property and assets why it is very important because it is not a necessity that i am in very good terms with my husband or my wife mm-hmm. i may not want my parents to take my property after i die because they already have a lot maybe they take it but then they give it to my elder brother sisters whom i am not in talking terms with so it's always better to take a decision beforehand where your assets should go after you're not there now uh, the problem with the uae law is that it's all sharia law because we know it's not a secular country it's yeah. islam is the official religion the government says it but yeah. india it's a secular country it means yeah. all the religions they are free to practice propagate their values at the same time for personal matters yeah. your religion takes over yeah. so in india for all the family matters whether it be uh, you know your guardianship rights you want to adopt a child it's your marriage it's your divorce and it's your property mm-hmm. your religion uh, laws will take over now the problem here is for example if somebody's husband passed away if you don't have a will your family members which which would include your husband wife and children they all have a simultaneous share now imagine the husband is not there the children are not ready to take care of the property at this stage maybe i'm not in talking terms with my parents who are back in india i don't want to give them the share i want my wife to take care of the property and look after my children now in in case there is no will what will happen to the wife do you think she'll go to the court in that mental state i'm not saying that the law is biased or it it does not take care of the expats but then why do you have to go through that entire hassle you should always protect yourself your assets and make a will and how expensive is it to get a will there are different platforms at which you can just go and get your will drafted and registered including difc dubai courts abu dhabi courts depending upon which platform do you choose you can save your money like dif is dif is the most expensive one it charges to 10000 dirham which is pretty much of an amount uh, dubai courts and abu dhabi courts are comparatively like 1000 1200 dirhams mm-hmm. okay looking at the price of course everybody wants to go to the court yes. but understand the difference between these platforms see the courts uh, always follow the civil law which is the law of the land of the ua which is primarily sharia law coming to the other side difc it follows the common law India is a common law country UK is a common law country so the law is very different so no matter what the sharia law says if you have your will registered with DIFC your property will go as per your whims and fancies whatever you have got noted down that is one difference second difference is that in uh, Dubai courts and Abu Dhabi courts even if you have your will stating that your property should go to ABC eventually understand what is the mindset of the judge who's been trained in sharia law their interpretation would always be different than somebody who's sitting in DIFC because that person is trained in common law apart from these two things it's a matter of convenience also for example for DIFC if your beneficiaries say your children your husband they are not in the country even if they are remotely situated we can do a video conferencing and then they can be registered in the will unlike in the court system where the person has to be physically present otherwise if you get into legal complexities you will eventually favor that one what are the most common will mistakes people are likely to make when they write a will i've had some funny experiences so there was this couple appro- which approached me and uh, so the husband did not tell the wife that he had invested in two three properties because maybe i don't know he wanted to give surprise or whatever you're spending money we're creating a will you must include all the assets and properties which you have so hiding about your assets is a common mistake a lot of people do second most of the people think that a will is all about your properties real estate investment no even if it's your bank account which has just 50000 dirhams what if you die and nobody can access that account so you should also include your bank accounts even if it's just say 20000 dirhams spend 5000 spend 10000 and get that protected So these are the things. What about kids? I think Sharia law is different. I always ask my clients in the will if you want to include your children who should be your ultimate beneficiaries. What if your spouse dies before your children can get the property? So these are all the things that you must discuss with your clients and take care of everything beforehand. 
because there's no point you spend money you get a will drafted registered but it's unclear so there has to be a clear guideline as to who's going to be the beneficiary what is the percentage of share you want to give to each person maybe you know you want to give 80% to your wife and 20% to your children mm -hmm. then you have to tell me whether you have one ch child or two children mm -hmm. then what's their age whether they are minor or major when you want them to take care of the property so everything first it has to come from the client if the mm -hmm. client does not trust me mm -hmm. again that's my duty also to gain the trust of the client as a lawyer yeah i mean we can't really come to a good drafted will otherwise i think it's a waste of time and money yeah of course i've created a will do i need to update the will also this is a, another difference between uh, dubai courts abu dhabi courts and difc in the court system you can't update your will okay. for that you have to register another will right. but in difc you do have an option of updating the will it means you can add another asset i would love to get to know the other side of chandni so we have a hamper here which you got to win this is called our direct dil se round the hamper is really special because again you know we we are very passionate about women entrepreneurs in the community and everything in this hamper comes from women entrepreneurs in the community but you can you have to this is a like a question answer round you have to answer us direct dil se and tell us more about you favorite law themed movie or tv show suits one law you would change if you could in the uae itself Uh, I would like to introduce a law. I think uh, the insurance should be free for all the expats. Please, government, if you're listening, even if it's the basic insurance, we should not be asked to pay for it because I think this is the basic necessity, and uh, we need it as much as your citizens need it. So this is one thing. A country you d dream of traveling to? Pakistan, because it's difficult, and I like challenges. So Pakistan, I would love to see you someday. <laughs> vegan dish you love the most? I think majority of the Indian food is by default vegan. Yeah. People in Dubai think that vegan is all fancy. and expensive stuff which is not the case i would go with any stuffed paratha yeah. gobi paratha is my favorite so you are a vegan yes. by choice yeah yeah why did you turn vegan i focused more on conscious living mm -hmm. so conscious living is about everything what you're saying what you're thinking what you're consuming and what's the impact on the society and the environment in general so i realized that what i'm eating whether it's dairy products or meat it's a, a result of somebody's pain tears i did not want that so i turned vegan it was my new year resolution while eating meat i decided this and from next year, next day onwards i stopped eating what is the most challenging aspect of being a lawyer shanni when you choose legal profession your life is full of challenges i always knew it and hence i went in this direction i think the biggest challenge i face is a uh, winning the trust of the client because uh, there's a stereotype built around uh, the image of a lawyer so to break that to empathize with the client to tell somebody that you can trust me i think this is the biggest challenge i face so how many languages do you know i right speak now? punjabi punjabi sindhi because i'm half sindhi okay i speak uh, hindi urdu english is there a language you wish to learn yeah arabic i think i can connect better with the local population what's your favorite quote or mantra my favorite uh, quote is by the famous jurist come senior advocate nani palki wala he said that uh, we have not inherited this planet earth from our uh, forefathers rather we've borrowed it from our coming generation so we must preserve it so this is one and my personal casual favorite is every day is a new day are you a tech person do you use a lot of technology I have no other option see we we can't say that I'm from this particular generation we don't want it it's the need of the hour and we live in UAE yeah. just focusing entirely on AI yeah. so I do I am learning each day and these days it's Instagram my go to app <laughs> because yeah because of Dubai factology what's the app you use daily it's Instagram Instagram yeah yeah because it's giving me recognition it's giving me a lot of organic leads I'm growing each day it's giving me a lot of confidence so yeah Instagram what's the best part of living in Dubai at every step there's an opportunity waiting for you i think everywhere you look right left everywhere it's full of opportunities it's just that you have to be ready to accept it and go ahead so this is what i love what's the subject you love teaching the most because i know you teach law right at amity law school and you take you know one to one coaching also what's your most favorite subject i'm more interested into social and political life so constitutional law definitely so suits is your favorite sort of tv show and the most popular one right did they make any law mistakes in suits Yeah, of course. So many. I think yeah, <laughs> it changed the entire conception about law. Uh, I think the first one is that they show that every lawyer is super fancy. So that's not really the case because trust me, when we go back to our chambers, we literally just sit and we are dwelling around the books. So yeah, that's not the real life. Talk to me about traveling solo and you know what was the first experience like? I don't like to plan much in advance. I just know that this country I'm going to and this is the hotel where I'll stay my first night and then later on it just unfolds. 
you know, when you start traveling, there are a lot of qualities which you inculcate. The first one is courage. A lot of things you're not very confident about your own self. But when you go out and you don't have any family member to look up to, you take your decisions, you know where you have to stay, where you have to go. And the same courage you can use in your business also. Nobody told me what to do. I knew that I could do it. So courage is something I learned from solo tripping. Second is decision making. You're on your own. Whether you want to go for the rides or whether you want to go amidst the nature, whether you want to go to Scotland or this country, that country, right? So decision making again is something I've learned from solo tripping. Time management, very important. I know that I'm in this particular country for three days or four days because fifth day I have to go back to office. How do I manage my entire time? These are all the things that I've learned because I traveled solo. I don't think I would have been an entrepreneur this soon if I had not traveled to all these 15 countries in past two and a half years. So you traveled 15 countries. Which was the first one you? First one was Azerbaijan. That was the easiest one because I did not have to apply for any separate visa. So it started from Azerbaijan. Then I had my Europe trip. I thought I'll just go to Czech Republic, come back. And from there I started. I covered eight countries in one single month. Then I came back. Then I went to UK. I went to Ireland. Then again Europe. Then Which I... of these has been the most favorite? trip so far like you'd love to do it again I don't like to go to the same country again I would uh, prefer to go to the UK again why because uh, our legal system pretty much is from the UK and the country is huge and you can never explore everything in one go yeah. that's one I loved Nepal a lot people yeah. are amazing people are so loving they would go out of the way and they would try to help you. So Nepal was, again, one of the best ones. I think better than Europe. A lot of the women watching this are from India. Uh, most of them staying expats here in UAE. A lot of them are struggling to take the first step that you've taken of entrepreneurship and living alone in a big city like Dubai, right? So uh, what are your advice for and tips for these women struggling to take that first step, who want to become an entrepreneur but don't know where to start? Uh, so the first step would be that has helped me is get a bit into spirituality. Okay. It's very important to spend time with yourself and staying alone has given me a lot of that opportunity. Uh, once you know yourself, then you know where you want to go. Okay. We all know our uh, weaknesses and our strengths. Not everybody is born to become a business person. I'd never had the courage for 30 years of my life to ever become a business person. You just write down, okay, this is what I'm good at. This is what I'm bad at. I have to work at it. Once, you know, you are in that zone, that is where you can take the next step. For example, you know, you also have to find out what really impresses you. Maybe if you like to just go out a lot, you can become an influencer and Dubai is a great market to do it. If you like to cook a lot or eat a lot, you can get into some cooking. If you like to do good makeup like Reena does, you can get into the makeup industry, <laughs> right? So again, you have yeah. to find your strengths and weaknesses. And then once you're there, then you have to find the courage to do it. Just take the first step. Don't think too much. A lot of people say, how do you manage? Because I don't think, I do it. I've done the thought part already by spending so much time with myself, you know, thinking about it day and I just take the first step. And then, you know, you always figure out. So take the first step. You'll figure out your way as you go through. Practice spirituality. Spend some time with yourself. Those are the amazing messages by our Women of Wonder today. If you like this episode, please like, subscribe and share this one. And we'll be back with another Women of Wonder very, very soon.